Well, hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. This time that round, we're looking at the progress on this car, the uh, Ferrari Dino 246 GT. Uh, and only two months ago, this was a bare shell which came back from uh, Ryan's uh, down at Cheshire Prestige Paintworks. And he did a beautiful job and he and I walked around the, um, uh, the, the beautifully painted and prepared body shell. But as you can see, it's very different now. Um, what we've managed to do, because we're trying to get this finished for the owner as quickly as possible, we've got a wriggle on, really, and then some. And uh, from two months ago to a completely bare chassis and body, we now have a car standing on its own four feet. The reason for this is that we restored all the, the components uh, as modules, engine gearbox, etc., as one module, brakes and suspension as different modules on each corner. So when the time came, we were sort of ahead of the game a bit and able to, uh, to slot everything together, just like a big, great big model kit, not. We've got the engine, etc., installed in the car. Um, interestingly, I mean, this, is, this car is of great sentimental value to me because I first started looking after it in 1985. It was a customer who brought it in. Um, he passed away uh, a couple of years ago and the family asked me to find a new home for the car, which I did, and we are restoring it to its new glory, or maybe better than new, dare I say it, um, on behalf of the new owner. But it's interesting because when Dinos were first made, um, Enzo Ferrari famously uh, didn't describe them as a Ferrari, even though the engine was a direct descendant of Dino, his son, Alfred Dino, uh, his pet project, which he did for his technical um, university, and that was the V6 engine. And of course, the engine in this car is a V6. It was the first one, um, first road car Ferrari made with a V6, and he was concerned about whether it would sell or not. So the brochure said, tiny, brilliant, safe, almost a Ferrari. Um, and for that reason, um, there was a, a sort of sticky tension going on between um, f people, who, people selling them wanting to think they were a Ferrari, people buying them wanted to think they were a Ferrari, but people making them were hedging their bets because Enzo Ferrari didn't want it to potentially undervalue the brand. And we look at the, so many manufacturers these days who've sold themselves out to huge, comparatively huge production numbers in an effort to keep the brand alive, which they have, but uh, there are now far more um, ex exclusive cars on the road which aren't so exclusive anymore. But anyway, that's another story. Um, this, they made 448 right-hand drive only, a very, very small amount, actually. And because of this tension between trying to market it as a Ferrari and not, um, what Ferrari Maranello concessionaires did very cleverly, when Dinos came into the UK, they were not badged as a Ferrari, as I say. So what they did was they, it didn't have that on and it didn't have that on. It just had Dino GT on the back. So what Maranello concessionaires did was buy badges, the prancing horse, of course, the famous Ferrari symbol, and the Ferrari script, and they actually put them on the car to add value to the car. Clever marketing uh, strategy. It worked um, because, as I say, they sold 448 of them. But um, what we're going to do now is just go around the car and um, just look at one or two things that, uh, that have, have um, particularly uh, sort of gone on. One of the interesting things is this curved back window. The Jaguar XJS followed suit a few years later, but actually very cleverly because of the way it's styled, the back window in the XJS is flat, even though you have that sort of curved flying buttress look um, on the XJSs. This is anything but flat. It's very curved and it is an absolute nightmare to fit this window, particularly with, as this is, 50 year old glass, we assume it's the original window, because glass goes brittle over time and it's super easy to crack it. Just when you're fitting it, it's intricate, etc. It took six attempts to fit this rear window six attempts by some extremely competent professionals. That gives you some idea how tricky it is to get that rear screen to fit properly, but fit properly it does, it's in. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll just have a little tour around and uh, see some of the bits that have been going on.
some months ago, one of the things we did in anticipation again of the car coming back, Craig uh, retrimmed the dashboard in um, the mouse hair material, which was commonly used at the time on De Ferrari Daytonas, Dinos, um, 365 GTC4s, uh, 400s, lo lots of different Ferraris and, f and a few Lamborghinis as well. Um, Islero, Countach, Espada. Um, and it looks absolutely magnificent uh, when it's new, but the the, prob the difficulty was with it, UV light faded it quite drastically. And the way to tell what they do look like from new is to open the glove box. Obviously this is new, so it's all of a piece, but generally if you open the glove box on an old Ferrari, um, you can see how, um, how different it actually is. And one of the... Um, one of the beautiful things that we've retrieved from um, the previous owner's uh, time was this lovely blowpunked push-button radio from the early 70s. This will have been fitted when the car was new. That's actually worth, um, I don't like being vulgar and talking about such things, but it's actually worth a lot of money now. And we've, we've uh, um, said to the owner, do you want us to black, blank that off? Because a radio was optional at the time. Or do you want us to put it back in? And he said, oh, please put it back in. So um, there it is. How many classic cars have their original radio in? Very, very few. Um, these days they tend to be upgraded to uh, DAB or um, have an FM channel put in them while we still have those things because uh, things are transitioning to DAB2 now. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, even visually, it's just a very, very special thing. Craig's redone the headlining, which has also been, obviously been put back in since the car came back. Um, and we're starting to put the trim in, the centre console, etc. Um, we've had to make um, some parts for the water, uh, quarter lights and drop glass windows, the uh, windows that go up and down in the doors, um, because they were absolutely rotten which is fine because they weren't, when Ferrari built these cars, they did not anticipate they'd be lasting 50 years. We'll have a, a stroll around the car and just a look and uh, see what's, uh, what the underneath, what the undercarriage, etc., is like. Well, this is uh, in a way on the Dino where it's all happening. Um, we've covered this in lots of videos previously, but the, this, this chassis here, this chassis frame, uh, with these longerons running the length of the of uh, the car between the wheelbase are critical to this car's structural integrity. The body is sort of uh, semi-lowered on top. It's not a, a unibody or monocoque construction. It's a, it's sort of a combination of the two. Um, separate chassis underneath and then all the sheet metal and the car, the, the body of the car laid on top really. Um, and what can happen is, particularly around this area at the front here behind the front wheels, where all the mud gets um, spattered up and the, and the dirt and the road salt and all those lovely things that British roads uh, throw at cars in the winter. Um, it gets trapped here and it can actually cause severe rust in the main steel outer tube here behind the sill. And this car was fortunately perfect in that respect. But uh, we had a 308 in a little while back, a fiberglass 308. And people think, oh, fiberglass, it couldn't possibly rust. Well. Actually, um, these front sections were almost rusted through. The car was in danger of being uh, uh, basically breaking its back, which is horrendous, really. As you can see, this is utterly immaculate underneath here. It really is. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, Ryan did a wonderful job of um, actually taking the whole fiber. This is a huge fiberglass tub. The floor which sits inside the car he had that out i mean we really went to town with this car it, it's um it really is a, a deep 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 restoration we've redone all the brakes and the suspension as i mentioned earlier all this is is exposed there's a huge aluminium or aluminum sheet that goes over this uh, supposedly to keep the weather out of course it doesn't all it does is trap whatever gets in there and prevents it getting out. This was 1970s Ferrari technology. As I mentioned earlier, they weren't designed to last 50 years. Um, quite often they were so rusty that after two years they needed welding. Shocking but true. So um, we're, we're well on the way with this car. It's, it's very, very well preserved with modern products now, preserving agents, a uh, different level of paint from what it's had uh, from new and 
We and the owner are absolutely thrilled with the way this job's going. And I repeat, this was a bare body shell two months ago. Um, we've really, really got on with this and uh, the team have done a fantastic job here, Pete and Craig and, um, and James. Um, it's been a real joint effort and uh, we're, uh, we're really getting a wriggle on here. It's fantastic. Um, you see all these conduits here for cables, uh, accelerator cable, uh, brake pipes and wiring, etc, uh, um, etc, et all come through here. You've got these uh, two large coolant hoses that run right under the car to the radiator at the front here. Uh, this is typical Ferrari architecture from the, uh, the 1970s. The Boxer used uh, a very similar setup, the Berlinetta Boxer. Uh, we're really, really, ro really rocketing on with this and uh, it's turning out fabulously. A couple of quirky things we need to talk about really is this number plate. This is the original number plate from New, um, which you don't often see on Dinos because people normally want to put their private registration number on in the UK, but to actually see one on an L uh, suffix plate, which was from 1972-73, is very unusual um, and all the better for that. And this is the original number plate from New. Uh, or certainly from a long time ago, which we have polished and restored, and it looks absolutely lovely. Um, sometimes they came with a silver surround, uh, a chromed sort of surround, but um, sometimes they didn't. So we've left it off. Uh, we can always put it on if the owner wants it. These are the original bumpers, which we've had re -chromed. They have this rather quaint uh, rubber strip, which just fits over, over the outside of them, um, like so and um, it just makes for a very um, interesting uh, sort of rubbing strip and the bumpers are actually mounted away from the body so they, they do sort of work. But we've, we've actually repaired these, we've welded in new sections. These are the original bumpers from new, we think. Well, we, certainly since the early 1980s when I started looking after it. But um, you can buy new stainless steel alternatives but there's something lovely about repairing the old ones and having them beautifully re-chromed as we have here. Um, and they just fit uh, the car. They're part of the car's character. It's just, it's just a, it's a, a feel-good factor thing, I suppose. Um, so we, we're just um, fitting the number plate lights, which go in here. Uh, we'll be fitting those. Another sort of attention to detail thing, which is uh, very pleasing. Well, one area we're focusing on on this Dino is um, obviously this is a beautiful original car in terms of 90% um, of the parts, apart from the sheet metal we've replaced, over 90% of the parts of the factory original, um, as I was explaining about the bumpers. But um, <laughs> this humble wiper blade uh, is a big deal, actually. It's amazing how details let cars down. I've seen so many... Um, car movies where uh, where they just haven't haven't got things right. I remember Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, they were in a Citroen DS with modern plastic wiper blades right in the in the foreground as they were driving along. 99.9% .9 of people wouldn't notice that but I did. Um, and this is a case in point. This is an original wiper blade for this car which has survived for 50 years. Um, obviously we're going to put new rubbers in it but the actual blade was made by a company called Vallejo who make clutches and things to this day I think um, and it was particular to the Dino 246 GT and the Fiat 130 Coupe and a couple of other things and um, it, it's, it's very satisfying to be able to put this back on um, with new rubber and make it look wonderful. I actually purchased a pair of these for a customer's car some years ago at quite a loss of expense at the time. And they took it to the Ferrari dealers for some Class EK certification work afterwards. And the Ferrari dealers actually said to them, they shall remain nameless. They actually said to them, we got rid of those horrible manky old wiper blades and put a pair of modern plastic ones on for you, sir. And, um, Obviously, he was far from impressed and they'd actually thrown them away just to make matters worse. Detail matters um, and so does knowledge.
So um, we're going to put these back on the car and it's just as you drive your Dino looking through the windscreen, it's very nice to see the original wiper blades. Um, I remember also years ago, I went to the Windsor Concours and there was a two, Ferrari 250 GTO uh, on display with, you've guessed it, modern plastic wiper blades. And uh, it was just laughable really on that value of car. Uh, I don't know who'd been working on it, but oof. Um, so anyway, there we are. The humble wiper blade has never had as much airtime as it has now. Well, that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, please remember to subscribe and like and we'll be back with something else very soon.